I just moved to a different town. And as you can see, I don't have a lot of my workshop with me yet. I do have a washing machine, which isn't even connected, because who needs to do laundry anyway? And I do have a 3D printer, which is connected, because of course I need a 3D printer. There is no question about that. You might notice that this is not the 3D printer that I have been using in my previous videos. So far, most of my projects were done with my FDM printer. This, on the other hand, is a resin 3D printer. Maybe you have heard horror stories already of such resin printers? Of how dangerous and complicated they are? And how they emit smelly, toxic odors all around them? As I want to use this to improve a few things in my new apartment, I thought I could take that opportunity to explain a bit how resin printers work. Let's see if they are really as bad as their reputation. So what is a resin printer and how does it actually work? Resin printers use ultraviolet light to cure and harden liquid resin. This process is generally very precise, which is why resin 3D prints can be amazingly detailed. For this reason, they are especially popular for printing small and detailed figurines. Pretty much all the resin printers have a colorful, translucent hood or door. Why is that? Well, as these 3D printers work with ultraviolet light, and because daylight has lots of UV light that could screw up the resin, we need to keep it out somehow. That's what the cover is for. For the same reason, in addition to actually using the cover, the printer also shouldn't be in bright daylight. But let's see what's under the hood. This movable platform here is the build plate. Notice that it is upside down. The 3D model is also printed upside down. The build plate can move up and down fairly precisely. Below the build plate there is a container. This is the resin bath, which for printing needs to be filled with liquid resin. It has a thin translucent foil as its bottom. Below the resin bath there is an ultraviolet light source. In this case it's an LCD display. These are all the basic parts. By moving the build plate completely to the bottom into the liquid resin and then displaying a pattern of UV light, the printer can create the first layer. Then it moves the build plate up for the next layer and so on. Pretty simple actually. Resin printers with UV displays or projectors are also called DLP printers. DLP stands for Digital Light Processing. There are also printers that use UV lasers instead of a display that technology is called stereolithography or SLA. Sometimes DLP printers are also referred to as masked SLA printers. Generally, DLP printers are a bit faster than SLA ones because they can cure an entire layer at once, while printers with lasers need to trace the layer with their laser beam. So let's find something to print to see how the printer looks in action. I want to put up a Japanese door curtain in the entrance of this room. 3D printing should be perfect for creating the mountings for a curtain rod. I quickly designed something that should allow me to easily attach the rod to the wooden beam. Once I have a 3D model, it needs to be sliced into layers that the printer can understand. I am using G2Box here, which is a very common software tool for resin printers. Before we slice the mountings that I just created, let's first have a look at the general approach for preparing resin prints. Just like with FDM printers, for parts of the model where no material is below the current part, resin printers cannot print that. These parts need support. Usually, tree supports are used for resin prints. Actually, it is very common to use support structures in resin printing, even when the same part wouldn't have supports when printed with an FDM printer. 
One reason is that the first few layers of a resin print are exposed for a longer time than the rest of the model. This is done to make it stick to the build plate reliably. But it also means that the first layers may be a bit less precise than the others. This is avoided by distancing the actual model from the build plate with supports, which can be removed later. Also, tall models may be tilted in order to reduce the necessary number of layers and thus reduce printing time. Another reason is that we want to avoid layers with a large cross-sectional area. You see, the cured resin doesn't only stick to the build plate or the rest of the model, it also sticks to the translucent foil at the bottom of the resin bed. And if it sticks to that too well, it might actually detach from the build plate or even worse, the foil may rip, leading to spilled resin all over and inside the printer. Because of that, resin prints are often oriented diagonally to minimize that risk. Layers with large surface areas can also be avoided by making the model hollow. However, it is important to include holes through which the remaining liquid resin can drain. I learned this the hard way when one day one of my prints suddenly cracked and started spilling resin everywhere, leaving me with a huge mess to clean up. I had been wondering why a hollow model would be this heavy. Anyway, for this print I will forego the supports. I can easily fix the first layers with some sandpaper if I need to and the cross sections aren't that large. The recommended settings can usually be found on the packaging of the resin. Layer heights are generally much finer for resin prints when compared to FDM prints. In this case I am using 0.05mm layer height, each normal layer is cured for 8 seconds and the first 5 layers are exposed for 60 seconds. So let's load this onto the printer and see how it goes. The build plate needs to be very level and almost touch the screen for the first layer. Once I made sure that that's the case, I can fill the resin vat. Epoxy resin isn't the healthiest stuff, so it's best to wear proper protection. The gloves shouldn't really be latex gloves, because the resin might get through that. Nitrile gloves are great. One of the main complaints about resin printers is the smell. I actually don't think it's too bad. There are plenty of resins that are odorless. And while it doesn't mean that you cannot smell them at all, I don't find it too troubling. Of course, it's still a good idea to have the printer in a well-ventilated area. The print can start, now we wait. Resin prints can take quite a while to finish. Even though the build volume isn't really that large. That's of course because of the high resolution of the prints. Also, we don't really see the actual model until the build plate starts to come out of the liquid resin. The printer is finished. If this was an FDM print, we could get the model from the build plate, possibly break away some supports and we would be done. With resin prints, there's a little more work to do. First, the model and the build plate are still wet. I let it drip for a while, so I have to clean it as little as possible. Also, the resin in the vat can be reused, so it's good not to waste too much. In the meantime, I prepare the other tools that I will need. The models are removed with a plastic scraper, so the build plate doesn't get damaged. Any excess resins is then washed with isopropyl alcohol. When a model comes out of a resin printer, it generally will not be fully cured. That's why it needs to be exposed to an ultraviolet light source for a while. It's possible to simply put it into sunlight. I have a UV lamp that I can use. There are also fancy washing and curing stations, but that's not strictly necessary. I also clean the build plate and scraper with the alcohol. The isopropyl should be highly concentrated. If it's too diluted, it will take longer to evaporate and residue might cause problems with future prints. As we have the finished prints, let's see how they fit.
I would say this worked splendidly. There is still resin in the vat. If I plan on printing again within a few days, I usually leave it in there, stirring the resin a bit before starting the next print. However, if the printer will be idle for a longer time, or if I want to change to a different resin, or if a print failed, the vat needs to be cleaned. For this purpose, I found this really cool draining holder on Thingiverse that I printed with my other 3D printer. It takes standard paper filters and the resin can drain right back into its bottle. After most of the resin is drained, the vat can be cleaned with isopropyl alcohol. However, the foil shouldn't be cleaned with normal paper towels because they tend to scratch the surface, instead I use a microfiber cloth. Liquid resin shouldn't simply be thrown into the trash. If we need to dispose of it, it should be fully cured by exposing it to UV light first. Oh, and never pour your resin down the drain. I leave the used isopropyl alcohol out in daylight to evaporate, the cured resin that remains can be discarded in the regular trash. I also expose the used paper tissues to UV light before throwing them away. So while there is a little bit more to think about and to clean when using a resin printer, I really don't think it's a lot harder than FDM printing. Just take your time and think through what you're doing and you will be rewarded with highly detailed prints. That's it for today. See you next time on Matu Makes.